Hello and welcome to today's video where we will talk about cache memory. This board is from the scrapyard and you may have seen it from a video that I published maybe about two months ago where I show you what I find at the scrapyard from time to time. And this board was part of it. It's a socket 2 board. So it's a 486 system and it came with some cache chips installed. Now, after a little bit of research, I have a feeling that these cache chips are dots. They are fake. There are no chips inside that can store any amount of data. And how did I come to know this? Well, I ordered some cache chips from AliExpress some time ago, and I tested them recently with my programmer. I will show you this in a moment. And these ones here are all the ones that are having issues. So I will show you how many I ordered. I think maybe 2% of the cache chips that I ordered are faulty. So yeah, it's better to test them because you don't want to install the chips in a board like this, install eight pieces or even more, and then you have to figure out which one is working and which one is not. My programmer has a function to test these chips and this is good. But there was no way to find this model number that's printed on here. So I used a model number that somehow matches what's engraved here or lasered on the housing here. But none of the models that I selected on my programmer showed anything that this is actually a cache chip. But we will look at this in a moment. So this board is a 486 board, so we will install the original CPU that this board came with. It is an Intel DX266. And we are also going to equip this board with 16 megabytes of memory. But before we power on this board, I want to show you an article that I found on the Wayback Machine. And this article particularly talks about these cache chips that I have here with this model number. So I'll put this motherboard aside now and let's have a look at this article. Here's the article I was talking about. This is a German magazine that published this in 2000. And what we can see here is that apparently there were many boards and many more fake cash chips in circulation at that time. They even went that far to modify the BIOS to most likely show a cache amount, although there are no cache chips on the board. And if we scroll a little bit further down, we see the model number that is printed on my cache chips. So, yeah, it is most likely true that my cache chips are fake. I tried to test those cache chips in my programmer, but I couldn't find the exact model number. There were similar ones, but those ones also didn't work. Let's just scroll a little bit more down and see a few pictures that I have also seen here. So these two pictures, I know the quality is not the best, but you can see the model number here again. AA26256AK-15. This is exactly the same that I have printed on mine. These ones here have a date code of 1994. Mine have a date code of 1995. And they even went as far as to remove the top of the housing. And as you can see, there is nothing in it. It's just the copper wires that lead to the legs. And then there is no die in the center where these copper traces connect to. I'm a little bit torn if I should damage my chips and see what's inside. Or we can use a multimeter later on and see what kind of readings we get. I assume if there is nothing that connects those traces to anything, then there shouldn't be any sort of connectivity between all those pins. If you want to look at this article, I will put a link in the description. Unfortunately, the article is in German originally, so you have to use a translator to get this into English. But now let's move on to the board and power it on without any cache chips. I'm just curious what we get from the BIOS when we go through just before the operating system is loading. You get a small summary screen. And in there we should also see the amount of cache that is installed. So let's assemble the board and give it a try. Okay. 
I have set up the board without the cache chips. I already tested that there is no short on the power connector and that the CPU gets the correct voltage, which is 5 volt for the DX2. The board works, but I'm curious what we get when we post the board. The beep is there and yes, we do get the correct CPU. This is all what I've seen before, but there are no cache chips installed. Okay, so here we have the system configuration. I press the pause button on my keyboard right now. This is a nice feature if you want to look at more details on your post screens. So here we have the system configuration and we have an 8486DX2, 66 megahertz. We have a base memory, we have the extended memory and we have a cache memory of 256, which is not true. There is no cache on this board. So... I don't know if it picks up the 256 because it's configured on the board or it is a modified BIOS that shows you 256 kilobytes no matter what is installed. So this is something interesting to look at. I think I will try to maybe get the BIOS of this board and save it and then flash the board with a BIOS that I can download from the retro web and maybe it will show then zero kilobytes because yeah, there is no cache installed. So I press the pause button again. It should continue to load MS-DOS. Or maybe I have to press escape. I don't know exactly. Looks like nothing is continuing. Yeah, escape. So with escape, you can continue loading the operating system. Before I update the BIOS chip on this board, let's see what BIOS version we have. Let me press reset. So I paused again. The pause button is really nice for these older machines. We have a deep green PC BIOS version 201R. And there is also a post string on the bottom. Uh, 17th of August 95, Opti chipset 82C895, and probably some other uh, model numbers that are printed there. Yeah, so let's quickly have a look at the retro web. I will probably just show you a screenshot. And I see a post string. This is the last line that we see here. And there is a version and it says version 2.0 RA. So on the retro web, I have a BIOS here with a post string that is matching the one that I have here, except for the last part here, I have KB11, but on the retro web is only KB1. There is an older version, as it looks like, from 1994 on the retro web, but this is not the version that I have. I have version 2.01. So I definitely have a BIOS that is not on the retro web. Let me get this BIOS off the BIOS chip and maybe we can play around with a hex editor and see if we can figure out what has changed in the BIOS. That would be interesting maybe. And compare it with the file that we have on the retro web. Unfortunately, the BIOS chip of this board has a sticker over it. I think it is probably very similar to one of the other memory chips that I have with the same number of pins. And I think maybe I can take a Winbond 27C. Let's see. A Winbond 27C 512. So let's try the BIOS chip that was on that board and read it. Okay. And the, okay, this looks funny. Why do we have double characters everywhere? Maybe this is not the correct chip to select. So now I'm confused. Um, well, Everything is done for the first time. Oh no, I can't even download that BIOS from the retro web. It doesn't have a download button. Okay, that makes things more difficult. I just noticed I can't download the latest BIOS from the retro web. 
let me download the version that is available on the retro web. And let's see what we get when I just... Okay, I get exactly the same. So this looks to be... Yeah, this is the behavior of this BIOS. So what I will do now is I will use a different BIOS chip. Let's see what's on this one. Okay, so restore card. There is some stuff on it. So let's erase this chip. Okay. So this one should be empty. Yes. And now I will use the BIOS from 1994. This is version 1.2. Let's program it. Program. Okay, it succeeded. Let's see if we can boot the board with this BIOS chip. And then let's see if there are still 256 kilobytes of cache on the board, even though there are no cache chips installed. Now the other BIOS chip is on the board with version 1.2. Let's see if we get a different count of cache with this BIOS. And then we can for sure say that the BIOS on the original BIOS chip was modified to always show 256 kilobytes of cache, even though there is not even a single cache chip on the board. So let's power on the system and see what we get. Yes, we get a boot. Okay, I have my finger on the pause button that we can see what's going on when we... Uh, okay, so it's a different BIOS. I guess it doesn't match the content that was saved before. CPU cache, yes, enabled. We boot from drive C, and now we can see what this BIOS gives us. So let's see what we see in the cache summary. None. Okay, so this BIOS tells us there is no cache installed. That is interesting. So clearly uh, makes sense because I don't have any chips installed. Let me install these most probably fake chips on the board and see what this BIOS tells us. Okay, I'll do this now and then we'll see what's going on. Okay. The cache chips are on the board. Let's see what happens. Okay, system boots. No cache on the board. So even though there are cache chips installed, it still shows no cache memory. So I would not be surprised if we start a memory test right now and we wouldn't see any evidence that there is a second level cache installed after the level one cache that is on the 486 CPU. So let's quickly run speedsys and see what we get. So this is now with the cache chips installed on the board, but I think everything is fake. So there is no cache on this board apart the, I think, 8 kilobytes of level 1 cache on the CPU. But that we should be able to verify now in the graph of speedsys. So 8 kilobytes, yes, this is the level 1 cache. And apparently it should have 256 according to the original BIOS. There could be a drop at 128 but I think 256 is more likely. And what do we get? <laughs> Nothing, okay. There is no cache. So yeah, these cache chips are indeed fake. And the BIOS that was on this board has been modified to just show you there is cache. Very, very interesting. So what I will do next is I will keep that BIOS that is installed on the board right now and I will go ahead and replace those fake chips with real ones. Then we will see if the BIOS detects the cache and we should see a completely different graph in speedsys. So let's just wait until the moving uh, benchmark is done as well. I think this one is also one of those benchmarks that is affected by 
additional cash. But there is no change. So yeah, confirmed. These cash chips do not work. I will go to my stash of cash chips now and replace every single cash chip that is on this board with something that is working. And then we will see what we get. Here is the box full of cash chips and BIOS chips that I ordered once from AliExpress. This one here is a working cache chip, so this one we'll keep aside for now. And now we can maybe check what's going on with these chips. So here's my programmer. And let's start maybe with one that does work. And I need to find now the correct SRAM chip. And this is a Winbond. Winbond, and I think it's this one here. W24257A. Hey, yes, this is the one. So select. In the picture, it shows you how you're supposed to place that chip. And it should be like this. So, and now I should be able to test this chip and... It comes back with pins detected passed, and we have a test result normal. This is how a cache chip can be tested with the programmer. But let's now test one of these faulty ones. And you see here a data bus test error. So this chip doesn't work at all. I'll try now to find another one where we get some access on the pins. So let's test another one. There we go. So here you see now we get an error and it actually asks us, do you want to retry or ignore and continue programming? But no, so this one here has an issue. I don't know what pin that is. Maybe it's an address pin or a data pin. Yeah, but this chip will not work. If you put this in the system, it can basically make the entire cache not work properly. Let's try another one. So I sorted these already before. These are all my broken chips and I throw them out at some point. So this one looks very odd. Did I shift it by one maybe? Mm, no, this one is supposed to be it. Let's try again. No, so this one has a lot of issues. This is the same model number. So some of these chips are having issues with the data bus. Some of them have an issue with detecting one pin. And here's again the working chip in the tester. And this is how it should look like when the chip is okay. So what happened to these chips here? These ones are from the motherboard. They have a writing on it as 26256. So let's see if we can find a chip that matches. So there is no 26 here, there is 24. And these ones do not have similar model numbers. So the closest one, 26256 is maybe the wind bond here, 24256, 24512, 64, 65. So I will take this chip here now. And let's see what we get when we place this chip in the tester. And uh, let's test. So yeah, this is very strange that all pins are detected faulty. As if there is nothing inside. And I can probably continue with all of them. No. And this one, I'll not go through all of them. Yeah, so every chip except of this bottom left one here is marked with an X. So... Maybe this one pin is not tested or not important. Maybe it's ground. I don't know. But these chips look like they have no chips inside. This is just a housing with some legs. Now there are real cache chips on the board. Cache chips that I have verified to be working with my programmer. 
Now let's see what happens when we power on the board. The BIOS is still version 1.2, which showed us no cache before. And now we have 256 kilobytes. So yeah, I have fake cache chips. So let's quickly run speedsys and verify that really the board is working now. And then we can test what happens with the other BIOS, with the BIOS that was modified and on this board saying, hey, you have 256 kilobytes of level two cache. So having that other version 1.2, Verify that those cache chips are indeed fake. So let's run speedsys and see what we get in the graph. 8 kilobytes, okay. Now we should see another drop at 256 kilobytes. Okay, at least there is a dip. So there is not much difference in terms of speed. Now, I don't know what the speed was in the other benchmark but yeah at least you can see a drop here i think the next benchmark the writing will not have any effect if i'm not mistaken okay so writing has no effect but moving definitely looks different so this one definitely will benefit from the level 2 cache and now we should see another drop yes so clearly this is how it should look like when you have level two cache on the board. And if I'm not mistaken, the previous graph only showed the level one cache timing and the memory timing. Here we should see now two, we should see the level one, and then we should see the level two, which was missing before, and the memory. And we will see that now. Yes, and we do have a level two cache of 256 kilobytes shown here which was not the case before. And I think overall the performance is just raised because of the level two cache. So yeah, this board was sold with fake cache chips and you can go back and look at the graph of the previous test and you will see that the performance just suffered. So you paid for something and literally got nothing. Now let's see what happens when I change the BIOS from the one that is right now on the board with the BIOS that I had originally on this board. This BIOS was modified and always shows 256 kilobytes. And now I'm curious what will happen. Okay, I changed the BIOS chip now. Now the original BIOS chip is back on the board with version 2.01, I don't remember, R, I think. But the real cache chips are on the board. So let's see what we get now. Okay, the post, that's good. Okay, and of course we have uh, different settings on this board right now. So let's load the setup defaults. Yes. Uh, internal, external cache enabled, reboot from drive C. So let's save this and see what we get. The BIOS will definitely show 256 kilobytes on the next screen, but what will we see in Speedsys? So yeah, here you can see 256 kilobytes cache memory. This we have already seen with this BIOS without any cache chips. So let's continue with the boot process and let's go into Speedsys and see if this BIOS at least will utilize the cache that's on the board and it's just a display issue or did they change more i doubt it i think they just modified whatever is displayed on the summary screen but to make sure we will see the graph in speedsys right now and this will verify if the board still takes advantage of 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache and I think this looks really good so we should see a drop very soon at 256 that means that board still takes advantage of the level 2 cache. Yes, here it is. So we do have a working level 2 cache on this board with a modified BIOS. It is a little bit unfortunate. I would love to put this BIOS on the retro web, but obviously with the modified content that it always shows 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache that is a little bit problematic 
It is a newer BIOS version though, it supports more features and we should see another drop here. Yes, so 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache are working. So here's the final result. We see level 1 cache, level 2 cache and the memory throughput. Now let's just go quickly and look at cache check. So yeah, I am looking forward to your comments. What do you think? And maybe you have this board with these cache chips and you thought, hey, I have 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache, but then it is just a modified BIOS and you have fake cache chips and you have no level 2 cache. So here is the summary and you see very nicely that we have level 1 cache, which is at 67 megabytes per second. Then we drop to level 2 cache with 34 megabytes per second. And the main memory speed is at 27 megabytes per second. So obviously these cache chips are fake. There is probably not even a die inside this housing. And to verify this, I have set up the multimeter here and I want to see if I can measure any type of resistance from one of the corner pins, which most likely is the power supply and ground. And I want to compare it with one of these chips. These are a selection of the 40 ones we have tested with my programmer. And let's just take one of these chips here and put the multimeter in resistance mode. So let me check if I just probe here, for instance, and I go to any of these pins here. Let's see if we see a resistance. Yes. So there is some sort of resistance from this pin to some of those pins here. And you see there is an electrical connection, even if it's in the mega ohms. But there is definitely something that is connecting those pins together. I can take another chip. Let's take these two. So again, I go here in the corner. So almost 12 mega ohms, nine mega ohms. So there is definitely something that is connecting these pins together. Let's have a look at one of the fake chips. As you can see, there is absolutely no movement on the multimeter. So these chips are completely empty. There is no movement and I can do this with all chips and there will be no, no different outcome. None of these pins are connected to anything. These are just empty housings with legs on them. That's it. So yeah, this is my story of this board with fake memory chips. So let me know in the comments your thoughts about these fake memory chips, the modified BIOS and the extra mile. Those guys went to sell fake cache chips. And this is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching my video. If you like the content, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. And also a big shout out to all my Patreons. Your invaluable support will make sure that I will continue to make those videos. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.